Hey guys, welcome. I'm Ann with Pearson Bell at Home in Old Town Spring, which is located in Spring, Texas. When you guys hop on, tell me where you're watching from and tell me what your favorite Redesign with Prima item is, whether it's a gilding wax, a transfer, a mold, anything like that. Just tell me what your favorite Redesign with Prima item is and I'm working on not tripping on this cord here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump on in. Again, like I said, tell me where you're from and tell me what your favorite Redesign with Prima item is. If you don't know, it's okay. I like pretty much all of their product, so um, that's just me. All right, so if you guys have questions, just drop them in the comments. I will catch them after the fact. Um, we will have to, we're going to move the camera down so you're actually going to see my workspace today which is a little bit different so the mold we're working on today is the ancient findings mold that one and what we're going to do is recreate expensive art on a dime so i found these right here they're run about 265 and if you pay you get a discount so they'd be 194, 195. That's pretty expensive if you want more than one of these frame pieces. So we're going to replicate that. So all you need again is the mold and you're going to need some amazing resin. This is casting resin. It's the white. It cures in 10 minutes because I have the attention span of a gnat. Um, it gets pretty hot. So just so you know that, um, oh, let me grab a couple of gloves real quick because I don't want it on my hands. I never notice a, an odor with it. It's not really smelly. It's just I don't want it on my hands. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on real quick so I don't get any chemical. It is a chemical, part A, part B. There are chemicals, so you want to be careful with that. Like I said, this one doesn't have much odor to it. So if you've worked with other resins before, they usually take about 24 to 48 hours to cure. This one, the cure time is 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. So once it turns white, it's cured. But the reason it cures so fast is it actually starts getting hot, very, very hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down a bit so you can also see how I'm measuring. You can measure in a a B cups or you can measure by volume with a scale I have done that before so I'm gonna go ahead and get all my little parts here ready so I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this down so you're not gonna see my face anymore sorry guys all right so there we go so this is actually level I had to put a couple of sticks underneath because it was 1% off I use my phone. There is a level on your iPhone if you have it. If you don't have a level handy, which I can't find mine. Don't know what I did with it. And we're going to fill this up to 20. And I'm going to do it twice. And the same thing with part B. Actually, you know what? We'll fill it up to 30 and call it a day. All right. So I like to get down with my item when you're measuring. And when this is part A... And you want to make sure you measure very carefully. And get to the fill line. Alright, and we're going to secure that shut. Alright, and then we've got part B. And it's a little bit different consistency, so it gets a little messier for me. You want to be right on that level. Okay. It's okay if it gets out. It's fine. All right. Got this all over my hands now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and mix part A and part B together. So part A is doing nothing by itself. And you can see it's clear. And part B is yellow. 
and it'll be a little little milky-ish. We're going to stir this around until it becomes clear again. Make sure you scrape the sides. And it is clear. Make sure it's clear enough. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start pouring. You guys will start to see the difference. All right, so this is upside down for me. It's right side up for you. And if you have to refill, it's okay with this particular resin. Just fill as many cavities. Ooh, ooh, that might be too fat, but that's okay. And on this particular type of resin, it does better in thicker applications. Ooh, that might be too much on that one. So if you didn't make enough to fill your mold, it's okay. You can make more and fill your mold. All right. Uh, I don't know if I have enough for this one, but we'll pour it in. Do not heat this. You can add a little heat to um, speed up some of the uh, dry time on the skinny parts. Do not put it in the microwave. I do not know that by experience. I just know not to do that. All right, so we got a little bit too much on that one. I'm gonna try to just scrape it off. Because once it dries, it you can sand that down. Let's just get that off. So hopefully that one will come out fine. If not, it's okay. Not the end of the world, right? All right, so we'll let those kind of sit. And you guys will see them start to turn white. That means they are curing. I can feel them already getting a little warm. Okay, you see that one's turning white. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, so that one's turning white. It's starting to cure. Like I said, as it cures, it gets pretty warm. So just keep that in mind. It gets really warm. So I would not throw your two-part mixture. I'd let it get hard. Like we're gonna let this get hard before we throw it out. We're not going to um, chance it because I don't want, as hot as this product gets, I wouldn't want it to catch fire. That would not be any fun. So we'll go ahead and let those do their thing. And in the meantime, I have some already made up for us. So I'm just gonna wipe this off. Okay. Take these gloves off, I won't need them anymore. Okay, we're getting rid of that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, once you have them made, your pieces, they're gonna look like this. So this one was white, I've painted it um, Italian ivory for this one and quite a few others. I have these that we did Bronze Age gilding wax on. So these are already done. These are setting up right before your eyes. Very excited about that. So we'll let those and it is it is warm. So they are pretty warm. All right, so what we'll do while we wait for those is I want to age these just a little bit. I want to add a little um, a wash to them. Now, I just painted them today, so technically I should wait till tomorrow, but I don't have that kind of time, right? I've got to have the, the power of, of lives. So what I'm going to do is get my brush a little damp. I'm gonna use the light brown glaze from Paint Couture. 
and I'm just going to, I just want to wash. I don't want it major on this. I don't want it all over. I kind of want it just really on my edges. Eh, you know what, we'll go on the whole thing. Okay, and I'm going to tamp that up. So I'm going to go again on my edges because I didn't really like that. Go a little bit here. Let's see if we can pick her up on that. All I want to do is just kind of make her look a little bit older. Damp that in just those edges. So I don't want it to be too, too dark. I don't want it to be too severe. So we'll let that dry a little. Okay, we'll get some here. All right. So we're going to let her dry. So you guys can see that a little. Let's see if we can get up close. Let's so add a little light brown sugar to it. Just want to give her a little aging to her, nothing major. Okay, so I kind of, not 100% where I'm going with this other design here. Kind of got an idea what I'm doing with the um, aged bronze pieces. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of water. I just want to wash. I want it to really be washed out. I don't really want it to catch the whole piece. So we're doing just a light wash. Let it settle in those crevices. Just give me a, just a touch of a dirty vintage piece. Add a little more in there. Settle that in. See if that will work how I want it to. And we don't want them to look perfect. We want to kind of replicate an old vintage piece. Maybe you found it, somebody found this relic. All right, there we go, right there. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. If I happen to see them, I'll definitely answer them as we go along. So like I said, we've already painted these in Paint Couture Italian Ivory. And we're watching that. We've got that one needs to do its thing. It may not, um, because I did scrape out probably a little too much um, out of it. So it may not get as hard there. It just needs a little heat, but we'll get into these pretty soon. So they're pre they're getting pretty, pretty dry. Let's see where we are. We're at 513. So they've probably been sitting for about seven minutes or so. So we'll let them kind of hang out a little bit longer. All right. So we've got a couple more pieces. We're just going to add a little bit of our wash to. And that just kind of helps you also see the piece. It's really pretty. We're going to let that sit a minute. And these look like ancient coins. Tamp that. So we've got her done. That one, and then we've got this guy right here. Okay. I think that might be all I'm going to use on this one. 
we'll see. I may not use those two either, but we'll see. All right, so let's check on some of our molds here and see where we are. All right. Okay, I wanna let that sit just a little bit longer right there. Those little spots that are really thin may take a little bit longer and if they don't turn white or don't get hard, then you just add, like I said, heat from a heat gun, a hair dryer. Do not put them in the microwave. It will ruin them. Let's see. We'll let it sit a little bit longer. It's still pretty hot. All right, so we'll let it sit just a little bit longer to make sure we got it nice and cured on that. They're not going anywhere. We don't have to rush those. All right, so next what I wanna do is I just wanna add a little bit to our picture frames here. So they are thin shadow boxes. I got these at Hobby Lobby. So we're just gonna move that just a tad here. All right, so I'm gonna add the same uh, brown sugar, but I may add a little more, a little full strength here. Okay, and I don't necessarily need it to be perfect. I just kind of want a little messier. And we're gonna tamp this. It's kind of my initial reaction. We'll see how that goes. So I just want it to look a little, a little aged on our frame. Kind of almost like goat skin. So let's see. Like parchment, if you guys are familiar with that. Not parchment paper. Okay, and this is one of those that's gonna dry just a tad darker than it looks right here. go all the way around and you're not going to notice on camera very much difference. I don't know if you guys can see that. And of course it's going to dry just a little bit darker. A little bit more here. Got a little bit more of a bald spot there. And you can use any glazes. You can paint them, leave them unpainted, whatever floats your boat. I just happen to want to give it a little vintage vibe here. Okay. And then I'll come back and I'm going to use a little bit of the gilding wax on the edges. So I'm going to go around all the corners here. Eek! No worries. So those are pretty much dry. All right. Let's go that. And if you notice you miss a spot, just add a little more glaze to it and pounce it around. A little bit different than I normally do. You normally see me uh, wipe it away. suppose we're going to need a camera person. This is hard to do the one woman show. All right. So again, I'm pouncing that. So I don't want to smear it. One, I just painted these today. So if I wipe it, I'm probably going to compromise my paint because so I should before I do any glazing should wait 24 hours or six hours something like that. I always wait 24 hours 
before I glaze so I don't pull my paint off because you can pull your paint back. Make sure you get your insides here because you will see that. Just kind of paint it all around the inside here. And this is just your glaze. If you want it dirtier, you could just let it dry and then just add a little bit more glaze. Or you could just dry brush your glaze and leave it on there thicker. Totally up to you. Just going to brush that on in there and that's fine. All right, so we'll let this sit and dry a bit. Okay. All right, let's see if these guys are ready. Get my mess that I made over here. All right, so these are nice, still a little bit warm. They are starting to cool. Now, all you do is bend your, tra your uh, mold and you're gonna pop these out. Um, they're gonna feel they're gonna be a little bit pliable right now So if you were doing one to put on furniture, this is the time you would apply it to your furniture You could apply it with the e6000 glue So this one Is done. That's what that looks like popped out So we're gonna pop like I said just bend this and it pops you'll feel it release so when I was checking it earlier and it wouldn't, um, it was kind of going with it, I knew it wasn't ready. So again, we'll do it again. Pop, it's just, it's so satisfying, y'all. So this has like a little thingy right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, this little bump out right there. That can be just flicked off or you can sand it off when it's completely, it'll take a little bit more time, probably about 10, 20 minutes and it'll be really hard you can go ahead and sand that back. Let's see. Go ahead and pop these out. But I love how easy this is. Again, it's it can be a little messy if you're like me. And you want to make sure that adult supervision cuz like I said this does get pretty they, they get hot. It's amazing how warm this stuff gets. Okay, and let's do this one. And no, I did not use any mold release, anything like that. But that one's a little tricky because it's still a little, there we go. So this one, we'll just kind of let him sit for a bit. He's still a little transparent here. That's okay, he will cure. And then let's see if I can get this guy out. I think I made him too thin, so I may have to heat him up later. So I'll use the hairdryer to heat that up and pop him out. So not a big deal, he'll come out. I just put him too thin after I scraped off the excess. All right, so, so you can see one that's painted and one that's not painted. So this one's painted, this one's not painted, okay? Italian ivory. All right. So easy peasy, you can make those molds. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, and again, our inspiration photos, just so that you guys have that in the back of your minds. Right here, okay? So I'm making something very similar to that. It's not gonna be as, we're not gonna do four coins on that, I don't believe. So, let me get this in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, 
is I have my my little coins there that we've made our little artifacts and what I want to do with these I want to add a little more detail to them so right now they're just the Bronze Age let's see just the Bronze Age on them so they're just a little more one-sided I want to add a little more detail to them so I'm gonna grab some of my eternal and we will, we will be getting these back in the eternals will come back in soon so I know we're out right now but they'll be back in stock soon we got a lot of our back orders from Prima are coming I think late this week so that's exciting all right, so I'm going to apply. Now, I applied this with a brush so that I could get it all over, full coverage. So now I'm going to apply just the gold eternal on my tops of my piece. Okay. All right, and you guys, Justin is on his channel tonight, his Facebook page. He will be on right after me at 6 central, 7 o'clock Eastern time. We are now doing more back to back so you get kind of the one stop, watch both of us in one day. All right, so check that out. So now she's got some much, much more details to her. All right. So we're going to do the same thing with these two. And I do like to, I do tamp off some because sometimes I have too much on my finger and I'll smudge it in. And I don't want to do that. So I will usually tamp some of that off. And I wanted these to look like old coins that maybe somebody found or collected. So they're not gonna be perfect coins. Okay. All right. And then we've got one more here. I think this one looks almost like a Medusa. Her hair is kind of wild. I don't think she is, though. So. All right. Again, all we want to do is bring out those details on these. Almost as if the coin wore away a bit. All right. So now, get this shut. Ugh. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put my little frame out to, to uh, dry here. So hang on one second, guys. I'm turn it on the fan. Kind of blow that. Kind of dry it out a bit. All right. So we're going to dry that. We're just drying the frame a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply attach these. So what this comes with is this, this is a skinny um, shadow box frame. Came with this. There's a fabric back here. So we're just going to line these up how we want to. Ooh, that one's still warm. So we're going to line them up how we would like them in our shadow box. Okay. So I'm probably going like this on our piece. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and hot glue those down. So we've had our glue gun heating. I really loathe hot glue guns because I make a bigger mess than is necessary. All right, make sure that's going in. Okay, and I like my position of these. If you're really OCD, you can just measure, make sure it's centered. I just eyeball it and hope for the best. Yep, that's kind of how I roll. 
I'm going to put a good dollop there. I'm just going to hold it down, make sure it's on there. Okay. Same thing with this one. she's on there really well okay and then we'll go with this one all right so we get that a little off right there No big deal. We'll line her up again. Let's see, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and we're just going to push this down. All right, so we've got that done. All right, so excited. All right, and if you want to, you can always have a mat cut to go around this. I have a mat cutter and maybe I will do that. I'm not 100% sure, we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna let this kind of cool down just a little bit and we'll go ahead and work on our frame let's see how far we are on getting that dried out okay okay and we can do a little touch up on it as we go also so if there's a little oops it's not a big deal all right so what i'm gonna do actually i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the frame i think it'll be easier because i'm only going to go around the edges with the glazing so for me it'll be better that way all right let's get the glass in there okay and then we're gonna put this part in and I grab those in there just drop them in and then you're going to push all of those down. Okay. All right. So we're this is where we're at. So I want a little more aging on the edges. So I'm just going to take my bronze age right there and we're going to just add a little bit. I'm going to practice that. There we go. Okay. So we're just going to kind of add a little bit to my edges. I just want to give them kind of a vintagey old vibe. If you guys are logging on, let me know where you're watching from and what your favorite redesign with Prima item is. I tend to like them all, especially the transfers. All we're doing is just giving it a little character, a little age. You don't have to do that. You could totally stop at any point. All right, let's see. Okay. All righty. So what do you guys think? I love it 
So that's one option. I wanted to do kind of the gold coin look or the bronze co um, coin look on this one. We're going to be doing on the other one more of what we saw in the picture. All right, let's get this glass out of the way. And we'll do the frame later. Yeah. All right. Okay. So on this one, my thought process, okay, I've got these aged out a little bit. Um, I'm thinking this guy in the middle and this one up here. No, I have like moments where I kind of go back and forth on this one. So I'm thinking like this. that so sometimes one of those things you kind of want to play around with so I feel like if I go this direction where I put my small one here that one another small one I need like another one here that was small if we did all smalls we could totally do that we could do like the four smalls I like doing different sizes so that they're all not really the same size so you could do something like that um, I'm probably gonna still go with the big one here in the middle round about there and then do the one with the crown this is kind of one of my favorites there at the bottom and then the very top this one does look a little more like Medusa coin there I think we're going to go that direction so it's going to be a bit like that so keep it simple all right so let's make sure we have these lined up and again if you are particular you can get your ruler out make sure you've got them measured out it does not matter all right, so I'm just go ahead and glue those on. Again, if you were doing this on a piece of furniture, you could glue them on with E6000. This is just gonna be some art. So I'm just hitting these with the hot glue on. This is a fabric back. Okay. Sure we've got those lined up. Okay. And all that this piece of wood is is just to make sure we have a, a little bit of a shadow box effect. And that way these aren't on the glass. Okay. I'm putting a generous amount of glue on the back. All right, so and this is a low heat glue, so it dries pretty quick. All right, so that's what we're gonna have there. When we get her all framed up, we'll go ahead and finish painting the frame a little later. You guys don't wanna watch paint dry, but that'll be the effect of that one. And again, you can always cut a uh, mat to go around that. So here's our inspiration 265 way less so you can create a lot of really fun things you guys this is probably my favorite um, design on a dime kind of deal so I really love it I've always loved these kind of pieces where you find the little relics um, and have them framed. So now you can do that um, with a two-part epoxy. And this one that we used today was this one, the Amazing Cast and Resin White. 
don't add anything to it measure perfectly if you don't measure perfectly you're going to have either it's going to not um, harden or it's going to get too hard or brittle so these are perfect um, for applying or making your piece there you can also apply these once you pop them right out of the mold there's going to be a bit pliable still so you can bend them onto your furniture so that makes it easy peasy if you guys have questions just drop them in the comments and make sure you catch tune in and catch Justin on his page at, in about 20 minutes he's on at 6 Central 7 Eastern on his page and we will also see you on Thursday I'll be going 6 Central 7 Eastern and he's following me right behind me so you guys have a great day and happy painting